Quite impressive, isn't it? Hello and welcome back guys, thanks for watching, Ryan here from the London Craftsman and today we've got a special one for you, a giant birch bookshelf, absolutely huge. Sorry, just finished eating an apple, should have finished that before I started filming. But um, this is massive, four metres tall, it's a really special one, um, we've got a couple of camera angles um, in the house so you see extra footage, um, really special, amazing piece of work. And, but before we start, um, firstly, um, thank you to Alan Beasley and to Stefan for becoming members to buy me a coffee in the description. Your donations will go towards the channel and put more time and effort in and being able to support, support buying um, new equipment, etc, etc. So thank you very much. Secondly, you want to stay and watch to the end. There's something, um, I don't know the word, a phenomenon um, that we hear. Um, near to the end of the video, um, I'll give you a clue. Um, when you go over 1,000 miles an hour, you hear it. Um, you don't hear it very often, um, but we managed to catch it on camera. So stay to the end, make sure you don't miss that. It truly is amazing. Um, but other than that, guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. This floor is a little bit different than usual, we can't screw into it. As far as I know, it may be a heated floor, so what I'm going to be doing is just gluing the packers down as we go, one by one. So, you know, for example, if that goes there, I'm going to glue that one down, glue that on top, glue that on top. Until I get my levels, then the bearers will go on top of that. So that is my um, situation at the moment. While Sean puts together the carcasses, Sean's just putting all the biscuits in, getting them prepared. We decided not to put it together in the van just because we didn't have a lot of space in the van. It doesn't take too long. And this is everything that we need to assemble. All the long pieces, our divisions and sides. Got quite a few shelves to go on on this one. Everything all 25mm, birch, oiled in white Osmo 3111. They're the doors. Nice bit of space to work in, nice nice bit of light. This is the lower cabinet, quite narrow. Well, not narrow, quite, um, it's not very tall. It's only 600 tall, plus the bearers. So it should come to possibly around that line. You can see the drawing here, it's quite low level. So we've got to be careful where we put this front bearer. The, the actual carcass is going no further than this beam depth. So we just got to make sure that we've got space to put this plinth. Imagine that is the plinth detail. We need to just make sure that it's stepped back at least 10 mil from this carcass, um, from this beam here. So we need to just make sure that this, this set packers and this bearer is in exactly the right place where we need it. Right, so we're going to mark out and cut out for the division that's going to be touching this socket now. So we're going to just put it on in place, but first, before we do that, I'm just going to quickly put these two bearers, chuck those bearers on, John, just to give us the correct height. Because I haven't screwed them down just yet. Okay, so we've got the bottom unit in place. We haven't uh, screwed it down or anything. You can see the socket at the bottom. We just need to make a couple more mill up. Just there, you can see my little marks where we need to take out to be able to close that gap up and the top gap up. Right, so I'm cutting with a multi-tool and the cut's over this side now. There you go.
You won't see any of that, it's just to give us a little bit more space. There you go, bearer's finished. Ready for this bottom unit to go in. Should we do that? Ready? And you can see why we've done that little cut at the bottom now. Just needed to gain a couple of mil to close up these gaps inside the carcass. Even though this panelling is slightly dipped here and there, we've still got to start off um, on the right foot, don't we? Yeah. We started off with not taking that little notch out and we're out of the bottom, then it's only going to cause us problems by the time we get to the, the four metre mark. So we'll just screw those down now. We're lucky enough to be able to have this column to screw into because we've got no backings to keep it square. You don't want to get L brackets into the walls. It's absolutely ideal to fix into the sides. So initially, we're just going to start with little packers in between. We have really made this up, just a little selection. And where our doors are going to be hinged, we've got a hole pre-drilled already. So this fixing here, which is a 70 mm screw that will go through this hole that we've already pre-drilled. But obviously we've got a trim to go in this gap as well, which is flush. So we need to step back that that, that packer 20 mil at least. So this trim can go in. So packer, step back 20 mil at least. Down in line with the screw. Let's get that fixed. Okay, so I've already checked the level, so it's fine. how we'll do it and we've still got our gap in there if you can see you can see the screw you can see the packer but we've still got enough space between the front and the screw to get a trim in that gap and that is all we're going to do for the rest of the unit all the way up and if we're lucky we shouldn't have to take this bead off here that was the plan but i've allowed 20 mil for a trim so we should be able to leave that on if we're lucky if this beam stays level all the way up <laughs> For this job we've got two sets of hinges, we've got the inset which is the big kick, big dog leg, the biggest one you can get and so what that allows you to do is fit a door within the carcass itself, not overhanging the carcass, it's within the carcass and this is what we need for this particular set. The door is inside the carcass and have a look there, the door is fitting within this rebate, okay. This particular door is sharing a division so this door will stop half again half up against this division then this door needs half of this division as well to hinge onto so that will be a half overlay you can say half overlays are the nine mil kicks and the full overlays are the 18 mil kicks and all we simply do before we start screwing these hinges on is to wind back the plate as far as we can to give us as much adjustment as we can just so we know that when the door goes in every hinge is the same and the same on this as well so we adjust this to the center so we can adjust the door backwards and forwards so again so we've got equal adjustment both ways when they come in the factory they're all over the place so we just reset them back um, so it's a lot easier put it in a hole two 20 mil screws hold it on and then after that, we simply just click a cap over the top. Really simple. One other thing that we do is we use these little rubber grommets on all doors. So as we're putting the hinges on the doors, we do all the procedures in one go. So we fit the, the hinges on with screws, we put the plates on, and we use these little rubber grommets. Perfect. Little 3M stickers. So that's a great little tip. Always use these. There we go. So the bottom one's near enough complete. As you can see, we're using 12 mil at the top because we've got another unit coming here. The other unit's gonna have 12 mil as well, and effectively 212 is gonna make it look like a 25, which is gonna make it look like 
the rest of the adjustable shelves. Just need to figure out a way of getting this last division in. Division this last piece of 12 mil. Obviously we can't fix through the sides anymore like we could these. But we have got biscuit slots still. Um, so we're going to put the biscuits in, slot it in, and once it's in, I think what the plan is, because it's right at the top, about two metres high, we're going to get a, a pocket hole screw to hold that last one in. Or if not, it may have to be some kind of bracket right at the top. But this is the only one where we're going to need some kind of other fixing, such as a pocket or a bracket. So let's, let's get it up and see, see what happens. Okay, so what we've decided to do is just screw these two together. This one was meant for the top unit, but effectively we're just going to screw them together. You can see the construction here, we've got biscuits here, biscuit slots. Effectively this is 25 mil, you can just see the way it goes together. There we go. That will go into place there. And that's the way it joins. And if you stay tuned, you'll see the way we get it fixed once it's in place. Okay, so are we ready to get this in? Yeah. Ah. It's better. You steal wood again. It's better. There's one to front of it. You steal wood. Keeps them taking the moments. It's better. Alright, so we're going to go for the lift. As you can see, let's spin it around the camera. Sure, quickly. As you can see, spin it around that way. Spin it around. There you go. See the shape? Now that's going to go in. This is actually the front edge, so we're going to spin it around. That's the bottom. Let's go for it. There. One, two, three. Right, you ready for the lift? Yeah. Yeah, you don't sound very enthusiastic there. <laughs> yes. Right, all prepared. Gonna get it in. So we we plan to just get it on the trestles. Uh, just get it up to that point. We'll stand on the boxes either side, and we should just be able to make it and lift it in place. We've got a scaffolding. Don't want to get it out just yet. I think we'll manage to get it in. Um, but then fixings and trims will need the scaff. So let's give it a go. It's <laughs> camera shy, this one. There you go, doors on. I'm just literally opening them up and getting the uh, adjustable shelf within. So just knocking the pins in. 
going to put the push catches on these doors in a minute. And there we go, just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. So the units are in now. You can see all the scaffolding up. Just help us out with the trims. We managed to get the unit up without the scaffolding, but now we need to get up there and just get fixings. One in that corner and one in the other corner. It's about six or seven. There's about no, there's about eight fixings, I think, in the whole amount. And this scaffolding has helped us out quite a bit to get to the top, just to get those fixings, really. Fixings and trims. So we've got a couple there, two up the top. Uh, we've got one in the centre, one there, and then we've got the bearers, obviously fixed to the bearers. Same here, we've got one fixing there, set of packers. Set of packers there, and we've got one just before the bead on the wall. And all the way to the top, um, we've got one right in the back corner. You can see the wall tapers in at the top. So Sean's just on the trims now. Uh, so push catches, trim on the left, trim on the right skirting detail and a clean up and uh, that is it there we go sean's done his little measurements i mean quite a few of you have been saying to buy um a, a scribe tool can't remember the name of them which um i do need to get uh speed us up a little bit but we're going back to old school taking our increments measuring every 300 mil and just taking our measurements that way for now it's what we've been doing for what for a while now, it's the way we're used to doing it. But I know you can get scribing tools to to do your gaps, which um I'm gonna look into. But yeah, it's taking shape. It's nice to see that back wall. You know, not to hide it. So yep, yeah, let's crack on with that. Get done before the sun goes. Right, so fitting the push catch is really simple. Here we go, we're using these little simple little grey push release catches. So, yeah, you get the idea. So you've got two parts, you've got a little base, and you've got the actual push catch. And the screws that they come with are absolutely useless, so I'm changing my screws. Um, I believe they are 16mm long. But they are still, they are three heads, number threes. Um, but they still work with a PZ2, so I don't need to change that over. So I'm simply going to screw this base on. The first thing you do is screw the base on to the underside of where the door um, catch needs to be. So there we go. And you've got a little tab. You see just there at the top? Little tab. That's telling you where it needs to stop. So you basically... Just putting it on until it hits the little stopper. There we go. And just make sure it's square. I come in about 50 mil from the opening. Get that screwed on. Um, it's obviously a two hand job, so let's go ahead and get that screwed. So there we go. The base is on. Two screws. It's plenty. Get your push catch with the springy bit at the front. And just simply locate the top pin up the top there. Can you see it's a little pin that locates? Once that's located, just click the back in. There we go. And just push it in. And you can adjust these just by turning this little tab to adjust the depth of the way the door sits closed. I'm going to go all the way back at the moment. There we go. There we go. Job done. We've got one trim in on the right. And we just got allowed for expansion as this is a, um, a timber frame house. We're allowing a mill or two there, as you can see, between the trim and the beam, just in case anything moves. As you all know, timber does move, so we can't make that tight. So Sean's just cutting the um, plinth now. That will go in. Um, where we've put this in two pieces, obviously you can't get um, a strip of ply four metres long. We've just cut it at the joint, which you can see 
um, the joint of the two units where the two twelves meet together in the middle. That's where we jointed it. And there we go, one more piece there. Two on the side, plinth. And we'll be going home. Take some pictures? Yeah. I just need to shut the van, that's all. Oh, I don't There you go guys, all done. What did you think? What did you think of the Sonic Boom? Amazing, wasn't it? I've never heard one before. And as I was editing the video, I just heard boom boom in my ears, like really, really loud. Um, as you can see in the video footage, we just thought something had just dropped from the floor above. Just thought someone dropped a set of weights or something. But apparently it happened 30 miles from us, something like that, from a fighter jet, um, just being scrambled. So really amazing to catch that on camera. Um, good one to keep. Uh, for the future so there we go i hope you did enjoy that and i hope you are enjoying our content we're trying to mix it up a little bit um, from time lapses to site fitting to making videos to vlogs like if you do like the video subscribe that is a massive one to us um, just to build our channel status up just means a massive amount to me but apart from that guys i hope to see you in the next one take it easy have a good week and um, bye for now